All right, it says I'm live. I never know for sure if I'm live. So if I'm out there and you see me, give me a thumbs up or something so I know that you're there. And I'm going to bring it up on my phone so I can see thumbs up if they are if they're coming in. Or else I'm talking my oh I I yep, I can see it on my phone. And my okay. So I can see that I'm live. Hello, hello. It's uh, four o'clock Pacific. 7 o'clock Eastern, 1 a.m. here in Italy, 8.30 a.m. Do I have that right? On Wednesday morning in Australia, and it's Facebook Live. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to be with you. Uh, it's um, uh, This is a solo tonight, and Margie's going to wipe the camera to clean up the lens there a bit. Thank you, honey. Uh, she said it was really bad. Oh, I'm so clear now. I can see. It's like I put glasses on. I can see. Okay. Uh, Tracy's here from South Carolina. And Missy says, uh, you are live. Thank you, Missy. Uh, Michelle's here. She certainly am. Howdy, howdy, Michelle. Deanne's from Connecticut. Wanda's from Long Island. Claudine's here from uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Nadina is saying good morning. So she's in my neck of the woods. Honor is in Wales, UK. Susan's in North Carolina. Maria's in Brazil. Hello, hello. Jocelyn's in California. Mia's in North Wales. Margie is, uh, hi, Dr. Tom and Margie. Love to be with you here. Thanks, Margie. Thanks so much. It's um, Facebook Live, and tonight you've got me. And it's how to charge your internal battery. And I thought, what a great topic to talk about. Uh, for many of us, we have um, uh, issues with our energy and sometimes we feel like we need a crank and we wind it up you know to get it going uh, uh, so there's a number of levels that we can go to let's see how far we go tonight with this one so the easy ones about internal energy the easy ones do you wake up in the morning and hit your snooze a few times and wish you had 20 more minutes in bed uh, um, do you get cold easily hands and feet get chilled you know, you touch your cheeks and your hands are cold or you wear socks to bed. Uh, do you have that last five, 10 pounds that you can't lose even if you only eat for a few days? All those are signs of a thyroid imbalance. And why do I start with thyroid when we're talking about energy and charging your internal battery? Because there's only two substances for which there are receptor sites on every cell of your body, every cell. Now, a receptor site is like a catcher's mitt, and the pitcher throws the ball to the catcher. That's how hormones get inside your cells, is that hormones are in the bloodstream, let's say testosterone, and it goes, it's in the bloodstream, and it goes up to a receptor site for testosterone on your cells. It won't go into a insulin receptor site. It won't go into a melatonin receptor site. It goes into a testosterone receptor site. Estrogens go into estrogen receptor sites. They won't go into thyroid or insulin or testosterone. Um, thyroid goes into thyroid receptor sites. That's what receptor sites do, and they act like um, the hormone at, turns the door handle on the receptor site and opens the door, and the hormone goes inside the cell. That's why some people do blood tests, and they've got plenty of hormone, but uh, in their bloodstream, but they have symptoms of a hormone insufficiency. Uh, that happens because the hormones in your bloodstream, but it's not in your cells. It's not getting in the cells. And so your cells are not functioning properly. <clears throat> there are only two substances for which there are receptor sites on every cell of your body. That means every cell needs these. The first is vitamin D. Vitamin D. And if there's only one thing you're gonna check in a blood test every year, you check your vitamin D. It's much more important than checking your cholesterol. Much more important. So vitamin D. And the other thing for which there are receptor sites on every cell of your body is thyroid hormone. Why? Because thyroid hormone acts like a thermostat on the wall of your house. You know, in the winter time when you go to sleep at night, you turn the heat down a little bit to save on fuel because everybody's asleep, and then you set it so it automatically goes up, kicks up in the morning before everybody gets up, right? 
you're saving fuel. That's a thermostat. Thyroid hormone is the thermostat on every cell of your body. So when you're tired, the first thing you have to look at is thyroid hormone and thyroid function, not just the hormone, but thyroid function. So cold hands and feet, hard to get up in the morning, wish you had 20 more minutes in bed, hit snooze a number of times, can't lose weight even if you try, feel sluggish, your brain's not just firing up the way that it should, maybe a little depression, maybe a little of the blahs. Um, first thing you have to check is thyroid, always thyroid. And for many people who go to their doctor with these kinds of symptoms, when they, uh, if a doctor does a blood test, usually he's gonna check for thyroid. And if it comes back and the blood test is normal, some of these doctors still give thyroid hormone, even though you've got plenty of hormone in your bloodstream because it helps people feel better sometimes. Why? Because you're shotgunning in, blasting a whole lot more than you need. And it never is a smart thing to do long term. Not a smart thing to do, but it works in the short term for many people, but they still can't lose weight with it, but they have a little more energy. What should you do? If you have adequate levels of thyroid hormone in your bloodstream, you're in the normal range, but you have thyroid symptoms, you have to remember your bloodstream's just a highway. It's just a highway and there's no lanes of traffic there. You know, and everything's bouncing around on the highway, you know, so, but what it's saying is that the hormone is not getting into the cells. So you have to ask, why is it not getting into the cells? And the first thing you have to look at when you're looking to see about cellular function of thyroid is do you have a sensitivity to one of the three chemicals that will bind into thyroid receptor sites? So there are three chemicals that will go into those receptor sites, but they don't open the door. They just sit in the receptor site. So the hormone goes by and it can't get into the receptor site because the chemicals are sitting there. It's like a pitcher throws a fastball, but the catcher's got two baseballs in his glove already. So the fastball just bounces out bounces back out again. So the hormone stays in your bloodstream. So you have normal levels of thyroid hormone in your bloodstream, but you got symptoms of thyroid insufficiency. So what are those chemicals? The most important one is chlorine. Chlorine binds onto thyroid receptor sites. I can't tell you, well, yes, yes I can, I can tell you. It's a lot. A lot of patients that have thyroid symptoms and they have adequate thyroid hormone levels in their bloodstream, a, a large percentage of them, they're swimmers. And what are they doing? They're swimming in pools of chlorine. So their body's absorbing chlorine. Here's a way you can tell that chlorine is likely to be a problem for you. Mrs. Patient, when you get into an elevator in a hotel and the elevator doors open, can you tell the swimming pools on that floor right away? And they go, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody can't tell that. How come you can do it? Well, I smell the chlorine. Exactly, exactly. And that suggests that you may have a chlorine sensitivity. So you do a blood test and you're looking for antibodies to chlorine. Do you have antibodies to chlorine? That's a very common contributor to thyroid dysfunction. I want to say hello to Kathleen in South Australia. Mary Dalton's in San Angelo, Texas. Cheryl O'Brien in Wellington, Florida. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl, you and I spell our names the right way, right? I think I've talked about this with you before here. Lynn is in South Australia, and I'm right. It is 830. All right, I got it, Lynn. I finally got it right. Thanks to your coaching. Thank you for that. Uh, Wanda says, good job, Marzi, <laughs> cleaning the lens. All right, way to go. Sharon's in Atlanta. Angela's in Hauptstadt, Indiana. Tim McClure's in Southern California. Hey, Tim. Patricia's in San Diego. I'll be in San Diego in three weeks uh, doing a couple of talks. Um, I don't know where right now. It's uh, the Functional Forum Group is one of them, and it'll be on my, our website. If you look at the dr.com, where in the world is Dr. Tom, they'll, they'll have them listed there. Claudine says, I need that my internal battery recharged. I've got chronic Lyme. You bet. You bet, Claudine. So let's talk about that for a minute. Chronic Lyme disease 
means that this person's immune system is unable to deal with the amount of virus that is in the system and the amount of overload that's in the system. It's a, uh, uh, it's not the bug itself that's the problem because many, many people have um, uh, antibodies to Lyme, uh, Borrelia, many people do, but they don't get sick and they don't have this chronic fatigue that some people get and it's really well, it's really real. So why is it in this case, um, this person, um, Claudine, <clears throat> um, is suffering with uh, uh, chronic Lyme, meaning uh, just worn down all the time. Well, and that brings up this whole concept that I wanted to get, get to today. So thanks, Claud Claudine, for bringing this up. And thanks for all the thumbs and the hearts, guys. That just really just, and you know, it just keeps me rolling, right? So we're good. We're good with this. So um, I'm going to use Claudine as the example, and I don't know her history, but I can tell you her history. Her history is that when she was young, her body was fighting a whole lot of something. Maybe she had recurrent ear infections, was on antibiotics regularly, uh, maybe not. Maybe it was as a teenager and she was having uh, uh, bladder infections or vaginal infections or chronic yeast, maybe not. Or maybe it was um, uh, strep throat and recurrent strep throat infections, antibiotics for that, maybe not. You know, but there was something, there was something that began wearing down the immune system. And as you know, antibiotics alter the microbiome. Some people never respond to one prescription to antibiotics. They don't get the old microbiome back of the good guys. Hopefully you get rid of the bad guys, but they don't get the good guys back, so more bad guys come. So there's very often, almost, almost uh, um, consistently, when people have a chronic infection that they're dealing with that's worn them down, there's a history back there. And one of the places you have to go um, to deal with this is rebuild the microbiome. And I'm sure Claudine, or I would assume Claudine's doing that because she's here on Facebook Live with us. And so she's probably been around for a while and, and she's been learning things and applying different principles. Uh, uh, I would assume that's the case. Margie's here from Perth in Western Australia. I've heard Perth is really beautiful, Margie. Uh, haven't been there, but I've heard. Um, so there's a threshold. There's an immune threshold that people have. And when you cross that threshold, uh, 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 I just read something Joel says, I'm not sure I'm alive. Well, that's a good one, Joel. You really need your internal battery charge. When you cross the threshold and your immune system can't deal with the threat that's coming into us on a regular basis, then some of these bugs, some of these viruses, some of these bacteria get a hold and they colonize and they just keep this pocket infection going on or multiple pocket infections that the waste of these infections this toxic bacterial crud circulates through the bloodstream and causes a lot of the fatigue that we get. So the, there has to be a uh, focus on where is the inflammation coming from? Has the adrenal glands worn down and need to be rebuilt? Is the immune system worn down and needs to be rebuilt? So with the adrenal glands, or with the immune system, I'll talk about that first. That's you do total immunoglobulins for IgG, IgA, and IgM, and you just see, do I have, and, and white blood cells, do I have enough of the tools circulating to fight all the crud that I'm exposed to all the time? You know, I just did an interview earlier today for a detox uh, summit. And um, what people don't realize is that never before in the history of humanity has humans had to deal with the level of toxins that we're dealing with now. Never before have we had to deal with all this. 
uh, and I'm um, uh, as I read studies on this, I'm just overwhelmed with the amount of what our immune system has to deal with. Some of you have heard me talk about the Toxic Substance Control Act, that it is the regulating federal guidelines on chemical uh, manufacturing and distribution in the United States. And it was a policy statement from the American Academy of Pediatrics, the top health care organization for children in the English language. And a policy statement means it's not an author that did a little research or wrote about his ideas. A policy statement is the board making a statement to go out to all pediatricians all over the world. And what they said was that the Toxic Substance Control Act failed miserably to protect children and adults but they were talking mostly about children, that in over 30 years, it's, the regulations are so cumbersome. The lobbyists did such a good job of throwing all these curveballs in the legislation that only five chemicals or classes of chemicals have been regulated in 30 years. All of the rest of the chemicals out there are not regulated. There is no regulation if Dow Chemical comes up with something new, a new covering for the floor, a new chemicals in the varnish, there's no safety tests that have to be done. Zero. It's hard to imagine that we live in a country that has no regulations on what chemical companies want to produce and distribute into circulation. The covers on the light switches on the walls. What kind of chemicals are they using in that plastic? What kind of phthalates that outgas into the air? There's no regulation for any of it. And you guys have heard me talk about uh, nail polish and the phthalates and nail polish and uh, how every woman, I think nail polish looks nice and all that, but you, you have to use organic phthalate free nail polish. And that needs to be on the top of your list in the next week or two weeks to spend an hour, go online, look for organic nail polish, phthalate free. Go to Anne Marie. Um, they're friends of mine. They're, it's a nice company. They've got really great products. Um, or go to any other company. Just look online. Type organic phthalate free uh, nail polish. See, see what you find. Order a couple of them. Try them out. See which one you like. And you throw the other crud away. Don't use it up. Get rid of it because when you put nail polish on, the phthalates are in your bloodstream within five minutes. You know, so it's all these toxins that we're exposed to that demand our immune system to do something about, to protect you from, because the toxins bind onto your cells. Uh, Tracy says, uh, uh, let's see, what, what does Tracy say? It was about CBD. Oh, it just got bumped. Let me see. It's there somewhere. I'll find it again. I'll find it again. Kristen says, I have low thyroid, insulin resistance, immune dysfunction, trying to get them corrected so I can absorb vitamin D. I've been using your product for months and only went from 19 to 31. Okay, well, that's a 30% increase, but that's not enough. Um, so if that's the oral vitamin D, then it's not that it's being absorbed. It's not that it's not being absorbed. Well, no, it must be to some degree not being absorbed because you're doing a blood test to check it, okay? So let's look at the oral microbiome for you, Kristen. Let's see about um, toxicity of the microbiome. Uh, that may be contributing to the mycelized vitamin D. If you're using the mycelized vitamin D, the liquid, and you've been using it for months, and you're using, oh, I'd say at least four drops a day, a minimum four drops a day, and you've gone up 30%, okay, that's good, but that means that there's some resistance. And the resistance could be the oral microbiome. The most common resistant, resistance is lipopolysaccharide toxicity. Vitamin D may not be utilized very, very well if you have elevated LPS levels. 
And if you're unsure what that is, watch one of our Facebook lives about intestinal permeability and how to test for it. Because one of the markers is LPS, and I talk, it's the exhaust from gram negative bacteria. It's real crud that gets in the bloodstream. The technical name of it is endotoxin, E N D O, good scrabble word, but endotoxin. And uh, uh, you likely have, you may have high levels of endotoxin in your system, and that's draining your vitamin D levels. That's very common. Jean D says, had a toxic adenoma and two lymph nodes removed, uh, partial thyroidectomy in April of 2018, diagnosed celiac in November of 2018, vitamin D deficiency, brain fog, and complete exhaustion. No doctor really had an answer as to why I'm so tired. Okay, well, um, the question is, where did the adenoma come from? Why did your thyroid develop this toxic adenoma? Uh, and and uh, what's your vitamin D level now? So, Jean, I'd recommend that you have a consultation with um, Michelle Ross, our Director of Clinical Services, so she can help you dial that down. Marzi will put a link in there for you uh, for clinical services. Have a conversation with her and see if you don't say, wow, I didn't know that. I'm, I, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, let's check that and let's check that. Because, you know, you guys have heard me say before, my favorite patients are those that come from Mayo Clinic and they don't know what's wrong. And I always say, oh, that's marvelous. Congratulations. Congratulations. That means, Mayo, that means you don't have a disease because if you did, Mayo Clinic would find it. You've got dysfunction. So we are going to do disease tests for you. We're going to do dysfunction tests and find out what's not functioning right. And then they come back on the second visit. And it's a great visit, you know, because everybody's nervous about the results of uh, blood test, you know, so they come in, they're a little nervous, and I say, well, good news, you know, as I'm looking at their test results, good news, you're a mess. And they look at me, and I just start laughing, this is great. And they look, and say, look, if I didn't find anything wrong, we'd really have a problem. But when I can find functional things wrong, you can fix the functional things that are out of balance. That's a good thing. So it's great that you've got all this stuff going on. This will take three months, this will take six months to a year. It'll take you a year to two years to get really on your feet the way that you want, but here's the path to follow and you'll get to 15, 20 years of slow degeneration to get there. Is it okay if we like go faster than how long it took to get here to get you well and it takes a year? But you'll notice you're feeling better along the way, all along the way, like this person whose vitamin D went up 30% in a few months. You know, we just keep moving it, moving it, moving it. Uh, Marin says, hi from Australia. Kristen says, I smell chlorine when I fill coffee pots at work. You got a sensitivity, girl. That's likely that you do. Luann says, hi, Dr. Tom. I'm a hypothyroid. Lost 30 pounds removing dairy, wheat, eggs, soy, and corn. Went from 88 milligrams to 50 milligrams. I have a chlorine sensitivity too. Uh, 88 milligrams of what? Uh, uh, now, it's not kilograms, and it's not pounds, so I don't know what the milligrams are. Uh, but if it's kilograms, uh, so it's just a typing error, you just got mg instead of kg, 2.2 pounds in a kilogram, so 88 kilograms would be 176, uh, and plus, that's for eight, for 160, about 176 pounds, and you went to... 120 pounds. Oh, way to go. Nice. Sounds like you're a babe now. <laughs> that would be great. And you have a chlorine sensitivity too. Yes. So anytime people can smell chlorine like that, the coffee pot person, Kristen, with the coffee pot, uh, uh, you need a chlorine shower filter because that's where you get more chlorine than anywhere else. Ideally, you can get a full house water filtration system, but if you can't afford that, you get chlorine shower filters because it's the steam from the hot water that you inhale. It goes through your lungs and up your nose, straight to your brain, through your lungs, into your bloodstream. Uh, 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 you get more chlorine exposure there than anywhere else. The gas does that. Donna says, hi from Paris, Tennessee. Okay, uh, those two words don't really go together very easily, do they? Paris and Tennessee. Must be a great place, Donna. Uh, 
James says, hello from Belfast. Hello, or is it Belfast? I'm not sure, but hi, James. Thanks for joining. Cindy says, what are the other two chemicals? Oh, thank you, Cindy. Uh, chlorine is the first one. The next one is fluoride. Read the story, the history of fluoride. It drops your jaw. Uh, at Dr. Mercola's site, mercola.com, just go there and type in fluoride and see the studies that come up and just read some of the stories about where fluoride utilization came from. And you go, what? But fluoride binds onto thyroid receptor sites also. And the third one is bromine. Bromine is used in breads and baked goods. Those are the three. Dorada's here from New York City. Hi, Dorada. Um, uh, let's see, Deborah says hello from Homo Sasa, Florida. Homo Sasa, Homo Sasa. Um, are there, okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, I lived in Japan for a while, so I fool around sometimes, but Homo Sasa. Uh, uh, welcome and thank you for being here. Um, Donna says, just moved from our home that was on well water to an apartment with city water now. Can smell the chlorine in the water and I've been feeling sicker. There you go, Donna. Uh, get chlorine shower filter, they're 50 bucks. Um, you can get them anywhere. Uh, Costco has them, but um, I recommend Thrive Market. Everyone here tonight should be on Thrive Market. You should be a member of Thrive Market. Um, they're great, great people. They've been in operation now for about five years, thrivemarket.com. And it's where Whole Foods meets Amazon meets Costco. And they're cheaper than Amazon. They're cheaper than Whole Foods. They're cheaper than Costco. Really. And they've got the highest quality organic foods and organic meats. Um, and when you buy a membership, I don't know what it is. It used to be $29. Maybe it's $49 now. I don't know. But you save it in your first order or two. When you buy a membership, they give a membership to a needy, a family in need so that they can order their peanut butter and get organic peanut butter delivered to their house cheaper than going to the supermarket and buying Jiffy. So please consider um, Thrive Market, everyone, uh, to order some of your uh, uh, products from. Okay, Donna, and get, get a chlorine shower filter. And uh, if you can, get a water filtration system for your drinking water. Uh, would you please discuss chronic reactivated Epstein-Barr and how to get this under control and also how it may exasperate cellular hypothyroidism and all the symptoms which go along with it, chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, weight gain, um, TIA. I don't know what TIA, uh, transient ischemic attacks. Uh, maybe that's what you mean by that. Yeah, a chronic infection, whether it's Epstein-Barr or Lyme or... Uh, herpes, uh, when these infections come out, it means that your immune system is unable to keep it in check. The vast majority of us have uh, herpes now. The vast majority do. When you do a NeuroZoomer Plus looking for inflammation in your brain, when you do that, uh, uh, somewhere around 30% of the people have elevated antibodies to herpes. Uh, simplex one, the cold sores that people develop. It's really, really common to see. And, and those that don't have an outbreak right now and don't have elevated antibodies, they still uh, may, may have uh, uh, herpes virus inside of them. So my experience has been most of us have herpes virus now. And many of us have Epstein-Barr. But why is someone's body falling prey to this. It's because that immune system and that energy system, those adrenal glands are unable to deal, they don't have the energy to deal with this. Why? There are many reasons, but most often is that the body's been worn down over time. And so it's going to take a rebuilding process to get back on track again. Uh, so it's... Uh, um, I just did an interview a couple of hours ago for a menopausal uh, summit about life after menopause or life during menopause and um, wanting to um, have a higher quality of life. And I said, you know, the first thing you've got to remember, everyone that's watching this, is you need a reality check. 
that for most people, if you have menopausal symptoms, your body's worn down and there's no magic pill. There's no magic protein powder that's gonna fix it. There's not. You're gonna feel better for a little while maybe, but it's really the um, uh, uh, rebuilding of the system that makes the difference. And that's true when you have a chronic Epstein-Barr. You have to rebuild the system. You have to build the energy back up again. So let's talk for a few minutes about some energy and how to rebuild energy. Let's talk about a couple of products that I've put together for energy. And I, I'm calling it the energy bundle. And there are three products here that I put together for this. And there's a few other things too I'll tell you about, but there's three products. I'm gonna recommend that you try this for three months, three products for three months, and just see what happens for you. Give it a test and see. You know, don't do uh, two weeks and say, ah, I don't feel any better, I'm gonna stop this. Don't order anything unless you're willing to give it a couple, three months. I prefer three uh, because then you really know and you look back at how you were feeling this. Oh yeah, this is better. And if you're on the right track, if your body's responding positively, you stay with it. If you're not, then don't waste the money, right? But give it a shot. So the first one is called GS, that stands for gluten sensitivity, GS Adrena Plus. And these are some adaptogenic herbs that are designed to help your immune system, help your adrenal glands build more energy. The, the herbs, uh, cordyceps, which is uh, uh, a great herb to help strengthen immune function. Um, American ginseng, there are seven, I think it's seven different kinds of ginseng. I really like American ginseng a lot because it's, it's not real yin and it's not real yang. It's the balancing in between. That means it's not real stimulatory or not really relaxing, but it's right in between and it gives you what you need. And um, rhodiola. First time I took rhodiola, I was really surprised that I noticed a difference within a week, I think it was. Notice a difference, and uh, that was just straight rhodiola. That was 30, 40 years ago I tried that. And so this product is called GS, for gluten sensitive, Adrena Plus. And it's got these nutrients in it, plus it's got some B vitamins that really enhance your adrenal function. The glands are supposed to handle the stress of life. Uh, uh, so GS Adrena Plus, um, I'd start with uh, two of them a day and work up to three, but just two a day is enough because there's three things you're gonna take here with this if you decide to do this. The next one is called Vegan Pro 5 Protein Powder. It's a protein powder to make sure you're getting enough protein to give you energy. And vegan because it, you know, it's good for everybody that some people like dairy, some people like whey, because whey is one of the highest uh, biological value protein powders. And it also increases glutathione levels higher than anything else does. And glutathione is a master oxidant. So uh, this vegan protein powder is comparable to whey in its results. The biological value is comparable to whey. What does that mean? If you take in 10 grams, let's say 100, that's a lot, but so nobody's gonna eat 100 grams of protein, but if you eat 100 grams of protein from beef, your body will absorb and utilize about 72 grams. If you take in 100 grams of protein from uh, chicken or fowl, your body will absorb and utilize about 60, so about 60%. If you take in 100 grams of protein from eggs, your body will utilize, absorb and utilize 100 grams. That's why eggs are called the perfect food, because its biological value is 100%. You eat it, your body utilizes it. But some people don't like eggs or they're sensitive to eggs. So whey protein is 104% biological value. Uh, beef, about 70, 72. Fowl is in the 60s. Some fish are in the 60s, high 50s. 
And then the grains for biological value are below 50%. So if you take in 100 grams of grain protein, you'll use less than 50. That's a problem with being vegetarian is getting enough protein. And you know people eat lots of grains and they're trying to get it, but the biological value is not very good. You know, even if you get the volume of protein in your um, uh, uh, vegan uh, foods, your body can't use it very well unless you mix and match. So what do they always serve beans with? Rice. Because the amino acids, amino acids in rice complement the low amino acids in beans. You put them together, you increase the biological value. That's the concept. And so you can add seeds in there and that type of thing. So this vegan protein powder, is, vegan Pro 5 protein powder has pea, rice, hemp, chickpeas, not chickpeas, chick, uh, uh, chia seeds, and uh, uh, oh, what's the uh, 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 cranberry, cranberry. That's the five ingredients there that bring the biological value of this protein powder comparable to whey. So you really use this protein powder. This was so cool about it. And it's gluten-free and it tastes great. Uh, we use it, Marzi and I use it when we're making smoothies and we'll, if we want to put protein powder in them. Marzi makes great smoothies, you know, with avocado and all this stuff that, you know, you just throw it all in there and blend it up and uh, with blueberries, frozen blueberries, and so it's cold and, you know, I, I drink it all. And the third of the three in this uh, energy bundle is GS for gluten sensitive B complex because the B vitamins are so critical to generating energy and so critical to your adrenal glands functioning really well for you. I know when I take B-complex, I just always feel better. And when I don't, I don't feel better, you know that. And I've got the genes um, to have a problem um, with not using B vitamins very well. My family has elevated homocysteine levels. And so that's what I have to make sure I take my B-complex, you know, and then everything's fine. Uh, uh, Kristen just commented, Yes, I've been using five drops a day. My biome test shows LPS needs improvement. You got toxicity, girl. So um, if, if you've done a biome test, you're working on rebuilding your microbiome, way to go, way to go. If you want some guidance on that, talk to Michelle, Michelle Ross at clinicalservices.drgott.com. Uh, Tracy says, Marzi, you are a fabulous assistant. Honey, you get that? Yep, she says, thank you. That's great. Um, uh, by the way, yeah, um, I see here uh, that Marzi posted, I'm doing a Facebook Live tomorrow at 12 o'clock Pacific, right here, doctor.com, and I have two guests, and it's going to be really great. One of them is a senator and uh, uh, who wants to talk about 5G and the problems with 5G. So if you guys are available, it'll be at noon Pacific tomorrow, different time, uh, because I want to go to bed at a decent hour. Bottom line, that was it. Uh, but it, it worked out for everybody's schedule, so we're doing that. We're, we're uh, doing it noon tomorrow. Please join us if you can. Uh, Peru says, why my LPS lipoprotein is always high and what can I do to reduce it? Do clinical service. Talk to Michelle at Clinical Services, Peru. There's something in your lifestyle and your environment that's causing this, because it sounds like you're pretty aware, and uh, you've been with us for a while. Thank you. I recognize your name and that you're from L.A. And uh, so sounds like, you know, I'm assuming you live a healthy lifestyle, but you're missing something, and you need some guidance here because LPS, it's what killed my mother. That's what causes sepsis, and that's what so many, over 250,000 people in the U.S. die every year from sepsis. What's sepsis? chronic LPS infections. And these elders, they get an infection, they give an antibiotic, it wipes out their good flora, but it kills the bacteria, it kills the infection, so they feel better for a little while, but then they get another infection, they get another antibiotic, and they keep getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And not that that's your fate, perused. I think you're a younger woman, 
uh, than that. Uh, but, and, but it happens to young people on occasion, but it's really a, uh, sepsis is usually a disease of older people, but it's just LPS that's been accumulating for years. And this stuff, when it's in your bloodstream, it's in your lymph nodes, it's in your brain, it causes a breach of the blood-brain barrier, gets in the brain and triggers inflammation in the brain. I mean, it just goes on and on. Um, uh, LPS will go everywhere in your body and cause any type of symptoms. You know, we know that when you do a uh, bacterial evaluation of breast tissue, that the microbiome of one breast will be very different than the microbiome of the breast that has breast cancer. It's a very different microbiome. There's different microbiomes on your two hands. You know, it's what you touch, it's what you're working with that, uh, this whole world of the microbiome is of such critical importance. Um, uh, Susan Smith said at the beginning, you said we needed two elements, D and what? Well, Susan, what I was talking about was there, there are receptors on every cell of your body for two compounds. That's vitamin D and thyroid hormone. And, and that's why it's so important to have a good functioning thyroid. Uh, Pari asks, why are my platelets low? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, there are many reasons why your platelets would be low. None of them are good. Toxic metals uh, uh, accumulate in your bones. That could cause, there's a, whole, there's a whole checklist of things you have to check. I'm sorry to be, uh, say this, but you need somebody that knows what they're doing. So I would suggest clinical services at the doctor.com. Talk to Michelle Ross. I think you'd be happy that you did. Uh, Tracy says, Berkey makes a great shower filter for chlorine. Great, thanks, Tur uh, Tracy. Uh, Berkey, B-E-R-K-E-Y. Uh, Jocelyn says, can you recommend a good whole house water filtration? All I find clear, only 97% uh, chlorine. Um, uh, there's a company on our website. Uh, I'm not remembering their name, but when I did the research on them, they had whole house symptom systems. And they were impressive. Um, so I'm sorry, you have to go to our website and look under recommended, and you'll see the water filtration systems there. And look for their whole house unit and see what you think of that one. Kathy says, hello from New Zealand. Hi, Kathy. Thank you for joining us. What time is it there? I know it's about 9, uh, 12, no, 9.22 in South Australia. What time is it in New Zealand? So Luann says, does this mean we have to avoid swimming pools if we're hyperthyroid? No, but it means you may have to. It doesn't mean you absolutely have to, but if you have a, a chlorine sensitivity, absolutely. How do you know if you have a chlorine sensitivity? You do a blood test looking for chlorine antibodies. Um, that's Cyrex Labs. Um, I, I think it's test number uh, 14, 13 or 14. I don't remember which number it is. You, you can look on our website under the tests. They're all there and you'll find it. Uh, Damon says, so what's the purpose of adding fluoride to our water supply? That's a million dollar question, Damon. That is a million dollar question. You read Dr. Mercola's uh, information, then you'll understand what I said earlier about the Toxic Substance Control Act uh, failed miserably to protect us because manufacturing companies, chemical companies do not have to prove any chemicals are worthwhile. They don't have to, and, you know, I'm so naive. I think, oh, are you kidding? Come on now. That can't be true. We're being protected. People aren't mean like that. They wouldn't do that. Really? You ever see the picture of the seven, seven dwarves? Very famous picture on the uh, front page of the New York Times, 1970s. The seven dwarves. The heads of the seven tobacco industry standing before Congress, all with their hands on their heart like this. And they lied through their teeth about safety of cigarettes. They lied through their teeth. Corporate America is not nice. And the sooner we wake up to that, the less autism you'll have in your family, the less Alzheimer's you'll have in your family, the less Parkinson's you'll have in your family when we wake up and you start protecting yourself. We have to protect the environment that we, our families are living in. Nobody's gonna do it for you. You need air filtration systems in your house because the plastic on the light switches outgasses. The 
Formaldehyde in the press board cabinets, outgas, formaldehyde. The um, uh, toxic uh, petroleum products in the varnish on the uh, press board wood floor, outgas into the air. You can't smell it, but it's, but it's outgassing. And how do they get away with this? There's no evidence that the outgassing from press board wood floors is toxic to humans. Of course there's not. Of course there's not. But it's the accumulation of this stuff that's toxic to humans. So the first thing you need to do is protect your environment. Get air filtration systems, get water filtration systems, get um, chlorine shower filters, clean your shower heads, take the shower head off and soak it in 8% or higher white vinegar to kill the bacteria that are living in your shower head. Oh, go back to our Facebook Live on showers and shower heads and see the photos of all the bacteria and the numbers are just terrible. But um, bleach, not, not bleach, bleach doesn't work because some bacteria thrive in bleach. Uh, white vinegar you use, but the standard white vinegar is 6%. That's not strong enough to kill the bacteria. You have to have 8% or higher. So, and what's uh, white vinegar? It's just acetic acid and water. So it's 8% acetic acid or higher. There are some companies that have 20% and all that. Costco carries this stuff. Uh, so you, you have to learn how to do these things to protect yourself. In the meantime, working to lift your energy. Check out the energy bundle. The next thing I want to tell you about is um, another whole category of adaptogenic herbs is Sunhorse Energy. And uh, Marzi will post a link here for Sunhorse Energy. And I've never seen adaptogenic herbs like these. I've never seen the results that I get with these herbs. There are three different um, products I'm going to tell you about. One is called Ultimate Energy. The next one is called Thrivagen. That's for women, Thrivagen. And the third one's called Mojo 8.5. Now, why am I talking about these? I heard this guy in a coffee shop talking about this stuff that he had put together for athletes. And, you know, I used to hang out in this coffee shop and uh, I've heard this guy a couple of times, so I asked him a couple of questions one day, and he said, are you a doctor? And I said, yes. And uh, this guy really, he knew what he was talking about for a lay person. He's talking some technical terms, and a couple things were not correct, you know, but most of what he was saying was right on the money and not commonly known. So I said, yeah, it's kind of interesting about your product. I'd like to try it. So I tried his product, and it was a half-gallon liquid back then. and. Uh, you know, I was a triathlete for many years, and I wear a pulse monitor when I'm riding my bicycle. And I have a loop that I ride, uh, uh, and I'm always in my pulse range. So I'm determining what gear to be in, thus how fast I'm going by my pulse. So and I've got it down. And I know this loop. This loop takes me about an hour and six minutes to do round trip. And uh, if it's a windy day, maybe it takes... Uh, an hour and eight minutes, something like that, a couple of minutes added on, but you know, it's steady and consistent. So I tried this product and I was in my pulse range doing my usual thing, didn't feel any different at all. And I came home and it was an hour and two minutes. I said, what, what, that's not possible, four minutes? And because I was right on the money, you know, I know, I know my pace, that's not, so I tried it again, hour and two minutes. Holy cow. Then I tried it the next day without the stuff, hour and six minutes. Tried the ultimate energy again, hour and two minutes. Then I was hooked. There was really something to this. Then I got a call. It was time to go home and disconnect our mother from life support. She was at the end stages of sepsis. And she was at my sister's house and hospice came every day. You know, so I flew home and... Uh, I brought my ultimate energy sun horse with me. And you know, I brought home a couple of suits because we were gonna disconnect, there was gonna be a funeral and all that. It was not an easy time. Uh, got home at two in the morning, everybody was asleep because the flight was late. And I went into the bedroom where my mother was and there she is in a fetal position, looking up, eyes half open, mouth open, like that. And I gave her a kiss, there was nothing. 
no response at all. Eyes didn't blink, nothing. Uh, and I said, I gave her a kiss and said, I'm here, mom, I'm here. And uh, uh, then I said, why not? I brought my son horse home with me because I was gonna be there for a week or two weeks, I didn't know. And so I tilted her head and I put some in her mouth. I gave her a dose. Set my alarm for two hours, went to bed for a couple hours, got up and gave her another dose because she might die during the night. Woke up in the morning, gave her another dose. Then my sister and I had to leave. Hospice comes every morning at 8 a.m. to bathe our mother, mother and sit with her and uh, play Frank Sinatra music. She liked Frank Sinatra, you know. So we come home about four or five hours later. There's our mother in a wheelchair. Hi, Tom. My sister started crying. I did what every good doctor would do. Give her four ounces twice a day. I mean, I didn't know what had happened, but our mother was back. She was back. And she lived six weeks. Not suffering at all, just worn out, completely worn out, but she lived six weeks at the kitchen table for every meal, smiling, talking to the family a little bit with the family. So I went back to Encinitas and I found the formulator, Dan, and I said, hey, Dan, hey, Doc, how are you? And I told him what happened and his jaw dropped. And I said, I'm in, I'm in. In, in for what? And I told him, I said, Dan, this is no sports drink. I know exactly what happened here. We turned off the genes of inflammation in her brain and turned on genes for neural function. Don't know how it happened, but that's what we did. And I'm in. Uh, this, this, these products, what you've created here, is going to change the world. And that was six years ago. And Sunhorse Energy was founded. Marzi will put the link in here. If you do the energy bundle and you do Ultimate Energy, that's what I gave my mother. Or we also have Mojo 8.5, that's for the guys. It's Ultimate Energy plus a little male. Or Thrivagen is Ultimate Energy plus a little female. You do those together, the Energy Bundle and one of those three Sunhorse products for a few months. If you don't notice and feel better, I'll give you your money back. I don't care. I don't care because I know it just helps everybody. And I'm on record now saying this, and my staff's going to freak out, but don't worry about it. You know, just try it. I think you'll be so happy that you did. I think you will say, wow, I just noticed I feel 20% better, or I feel 60% better. We have so many testimonials on feeling better. So it's, it's certainly worth the try, folks. And uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of energy is getting your brain working better and firing up your brain. And for those of you that are noticing that uh, your brain's not firing on all eight cylinders the way it used to, uh, if that's the case for you, then I would submit you put some attention on rebuilding your brain function and then notice how your body energy is. Because the, what you do for the brain, the things you learn in my brain master class, those things work for your whole body. There's some things targeted specific to the brain, but I talk about the shower filters and the air filtration systems and the water filters and uh, the uh, uh, flame retardants uh, in clothing and all that. That's all in the Brain Masterclass. So Marzi will put the link in here for you for the Brain Masterclass. And you check that out and see what you think. Uh, and so if you do that and you do the energy bundle and you do one of the Sunhorse products for a couple of months, just notice how you feel. And I would be really, really surprised if anyone comes back and says, um, I, didn't, I didn't feel better. I didn't feel better. I mean, I, I can't imagine that happening. The only way that could happen is if we don't take out the inflammatory things in your life. And then the Brain Masterclass covers that so that you can explore and find out what are the, tri what are the triggers that are um, contributing to the inflammation that's affecting my brain and my body. So uh, 
Uh, let's see. Anne Marie says, looks like no proof, more vegans sick than ever before. Uh, Patricia says, this is where we disagree. Vegans get enough protein. We are an over-proteinized culture. Oh, that's that, that makes for a, a good discussion, Patricia. That really does. And we are an over-proteinized culture. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it would be great for people to transition uh, uh, to lower protein content. I think that would be great. But you were born and raised, most likely, high protein. And your system has developed accustomed to and really sloppy about being efficient and using protein. And you transition to vegetarian in a month or in two months, and many people get sick. They just get sick because they're not efficient at utilizing proteins. So if someone wants to be vegan, my response is, that's great. Are you willing to transition over six months to a year? And if you are, you can do it very successfully and you can feel like a million bucks. But if you're going vegan next week or you're going vegan today, you run the risk of getting pretty sick. And some of the sickest people I've seen have been vegans. It's not because vegan, being vegetarian is bad for you or that you need beef and you, or you need high protein. No, no, no. But most of us were raised in a culture where we just grew up with a whole lot of protein all the time. And so your cells are acclimated to that. Your digestive system is acclimated to not being efficient at pulling in protein. So you have to transition. You have to be kind to your body. So you know, there's lots of discussion we, we could have on that, but please know I'm not against vegetarianism or being vegan in any way whatsoever. Uh, uh, not at all, but there's just a way of doing it that's not traumatic to the body, not traumatic. Okay, well, that, that's it. I saw there's some discussion here about that. Your husband, Frank, has homocysteine. Well, it's called the silent killer, Tori. So you need to get that homocysteine down. We don't, we've not failed. Um, it doesn't take more than three weeks to get it down to normal range. This killed my father. Uh, sepsis killed my mother. Homocysteine killed my father. I'm not going to go into that story, but we know how to do it. Uh, peruse your functional doctor told you it's genetic uh, unless he did genetic tests and he identified a very rare gene uh, over 70 percent of all degenerative diseases are environmental activating the genes there are some genes that like cystic fibrosis you've got that gene you've got a real problem right but the vast majority of genes are not the problem turning the gene on is the problem so we have to find out what's turning the gene on. So as take that for, um, ha have a discussion with your functional medicine doc. Linda asks, what is LPS? Stands for lipopolysaccharide. Um, it's the exhaust of gram-negative bacteria. Um, it's the stuff that, you know, we always get exposed to some gram-negative bacteria. It's not good for us, but we have an immune system in the gut that takes care of it, grabs it and escorts it out unless the immune system is worn out and it can't do it. Then LPS levels can build up. It causes intestinal permeability. The LPS goes right through into the bloodstream and now you're off to the races with, now it's called endotoxin. It's toxic crud that accumulates in your body. Just Google LPS and whatever disease you want. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, kidney disease, cardiovascular disease. Google LPS and cardiovascular disease. You'll see how it contributes to plugging up your pipes. Um, it's a nasty, it's a real nasty. That's why the wheat zoomer, which I think is the most important test that anyone can do, includes the testing for LPS in it. Because it, it's the most comprehensive test for a sensitivity to wheat, but also it identifies if you have a leaky gut intestinal permeability. Antoinette says, I have an ALS client. I have him on advanced do doses of cordyceps and B-complex with added B12. What else can you suggest? Find out where the toxicity is and get rid of the toxins. What's activating the genes? Uh, uh, so um, I would suggest you look at um, um, Cyrex Array 12, 
I think it's 11 and 12, the chemicals and the genes, the lectin zoomer, the wheat zoomer, the dairy zoomer, the corn zoomer. You have to find out what is inflammatory activating this autoimmune mechanism. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Calixto asks, are veggie proteins high in lectins? That's a really good question that I don't know the answer to. Um, they certainly would have some lectins, um, uh, the hemp, the chia seeds. Uh, I don't know if they're high in lectins, though. That's a really good question. I'm not sure that uh, we'll find out. Uh, we'll make a note to find out, and we'll post it uh, um, I certainly won't find out tonight, but I'll find out the next day or two uh, if the lectin levels are measured in um, uh, the vegan pro, uh, pro 5 protein powder, and we'll let you know. Okay, let's see, folks. It is 2.01 here in Italy. It's uh, 5.01 on the West Coast and 7, 6, 8, 8.01 on the East Coast. And uh, uh, thank you very much for joining tonight. Uh, if you're available, we'll be doing a special Facebook Live tomorrow on 5G at 12 noon Pacific. So if you're available, look forward to seeing you then. If not, see you next week, same time, same place. Thanks so very much. Bye-bye.